Halloween's right around the corner, so let's go ahead and make a few jack-o'-lanterns. I really like using these cedar fence boards. Not only are they super cheap, but so they also have a rough surface that kind of has that rough sawn look and that will work really well with this project. The fence board has some of these little fuzzies that you can just sand off with some 80 grit sandpaper and that gets it relatively smooth. We don't want it perfectly smooth because we like that texture on there. We'll want to preserve a little bit of that. So the pattern comes with full size drawings. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but it does list the dimensions. I'm going to be uh, cutting these out on the table saw, but you could certainly cut it out on the uh, scroll saw as well. I'm going to be making two of these jack-o'-lanterns, so I'm basically going to double uh, the number of panels that I'll be needing. So we have all of our panels cut for our two jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, we have our tops and our bottoms uh, right here. These are five and a half inches square. Uh, we have our side pieces, which are three and a half inches by six inches. And then we have our front and our back, which are four and a half inches by six inches. And then we have these uh, top cap pieces. Uh, these are three and a half inches square. One of them goes on the inside, so it nestles inside uh, uh, the box. And the other one is just more decorative. For the inside of the jack o' lantern, we want to paint it a nice yellow. I notice it really reflects the light so much better. It's much easier to do this now than later. On the front and back panels, I'm taping up the edges. I don't want any paint on those since they'll be visible. I lay out all the panels and give it a quick coat of white primer, followed by a quick coat of yellow spray paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, a little variation in the coverage makes it look all the better. Once the paint is dried, we're going to set aside two of these front pieces. This is where we'll scroll our jack-o'-lantern faces into. I cut the patterns down to size. Then with some spray adhesive, I attach them to the panels. Then it's off to the drill press, where I make pilot holes to thread the scroll saw blades through. At the scroll saw, we begin our cutting. I'm using a number three scroll reverse blade. Thread the blade through the hole, cut along the line, then move on to the next hole. Rinse and repeat, and before long, you're done. I have mineral spirits in a spray bottle, and I spritz down the pattern. After a few moments, the mineral spirits dissolves the glue, and the pattern practically falls off on its own. So our faces are cut, so now it's time for some assembly. It's not going to be anything fancy, we're just going to use some regular uh, wood glue, and then I'm going to tack them together with a uh, brad nailer. And then we just wipe off any excess glue. And then for the bottom, we're just going to eyeball it. Just kind of center it a little bit. Best we can. We're going to give it a quick little trace. And then what we're going to do is flip this over and we're going to use the trace so we know where to put our brads. So this will be the bottom. So for the lids, uh, this part here is going to fit on the inside of here, that way it kind of uh, is able to seat in there. Uh, which means we got to just trim off just a little bit off of each one of, it, one of these edges so it fits nicely inside the recess. I'm going to go ahead and glue in the inset. We're just eyeballing it here, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're gluing on the cap. Then we put a little bit of weight on top of it, set it aside and let it dry. So the box is complete. I'm taking it outside and I got myself a little butane torch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scorch the wood. Uh, that'll kind of give it a nice rustic uh, aged look and it'll look pretty cool. Once your jack-o'-lantern is scorched, both the lid and the jack-o'-lantern, uh, it's time to go ahead and stain it. I'm going to stain it with some of this Minwax uh, water-based stain. Uh, you could get this in colored over at any of those big box stores, and of course I chose pumpkin orange. 
I lay the stain on fairly thick and then with a paper towel I kind of wipe away the excess. On the face I kind of dab around the detail areas making sure I don't get it inside the cuts. Then I set it aside to dry. So I went outside and I found a stick and here I'm just kind of ripping off the bark and shaving it down to the raw wood. At the scroll saw I'm going to cut off a little section of this. This will make the stem of the pumpkins. At the sander I'm going to flatten the bottom just so that it sits nicely. I'm going to drill a hole through the lid and then with a two inch screw I'm going to screw that in. And I'm just going to let the end just protrude just a little bit. This will allow me to mark the branch where we need to drill our pilot hole for the branch. With some craft paints, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick coat of green paint. And I'm going to work really fast so I could wipe away as much as I can, which will stain the stem. And then once it's dry, we just screw it onto the top of our jack-o'-lantern. I'm using a little bit of raffia. I'm not going to get too fancy around it. I'm just going to kind of tie it around the base of the stem there. It gives it a little bit of texture and I think it looks kind of nice. I have these battery powered fairy lights and I really like this set because it has different displays. And the best part is it has a timer on it so it turns itself on and off without having to mess with it. And I'll put a link to the ones that I have in the description below. Well, that was a fun and easy project just in time for Halloween. I'll put a written tutorial over at Scroll Saw Village in the project workshop section, as well as a link to the pattern. That's all I got for this time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.